Steve Jobs led the personal computer revolution with the first Macintosh and continues to revolutionize technology today with products such as the iPhone, iPod, and iMac. Steve Jobs began his technological career by being hired as a technician for the popular gaming company Atari. After leaving Atari, Jobs convinced his coworker Steve Wozniak, to help him build and sell a computer for commercial use. While working in their garage, Jobs and Wozniak designed a prototype for what would come to be known as the Apple One. On April 1st, 1976, Apple Inc. was founded. The same year, Apple One went on sale for $666.66. After several unsuccessful attempts at assembling another commercially successful computer, the Macintosh was constructed. Released in 1984, it was the first commercially successful personal computer to feature a mouse and a graphical user interface, rather than a command line interface. No one had seen anything like this before. Even Bill Gates was astounded by it. To create a new standard, it takes something that's not just a little bit different. It takes something that's really new and really captures people's imagination. And the Macintosh, of all the machines I've ever seen, is the only one that meets that standard. However, after an industry-wide sales slump, Steve Jobs' relationship with Apple CEO John Scully crumbled. In May of 1985, following an internal power struggle and an announcement of significant layoffs, Scully relieved Jobs of his duties as head of the Macintosh division. Around the same time, Jobs founded another computer company called Next Computer. The Next Computer was sold from 1888 until 1990. It cost $6,500. A, a Next Computer was used by Tim Berners-Lee to develop the world's first web server software, and also used to write the first web browser. Instantly check my mail. However, due to the high cost, the next computer was not a great commercial success. In 1996, Apple announced that it would buy Next for $429 million. This deal brought Steve Jobs back to the company he founded. He soon became Apple's temporary CEO to replace the current CEO of Apple. On May 6, 1998, Jobs announced Apple's latest computer, the iMac, and started shipping it on August 15, 1998. It sold for $1,299. They abandoned the 3.5-inch floppy drive, which had been present in every Mac since the first one in 1984. Apple argued that recordable CDs, the internet, and the office networks were quickly making diskettes obsolete. For marketing purposes, the iMac was released in 13 different colors. At the 2000 Macworld Expo, Jobs announced that he was going to become the permanent CEO of Apple. Pleased to announce today that I'm going to drop the interim title. One year later, Jobs announced what would come to be the most popular music retailer in the world, the iTunes Store. The application is used for playing and organizing digital music and video files. iTunes can connect to the iTunes Store to purchase and download music, music videos, television shows, applications, iPod games, audiobooks, various podcasts, feature-like films, movie rentals, and ringtones. We sold our four As of January 9th, 2008, over 4 billion songs have been downloaded since the iTunes Store first launched on April 28th, 2003. Four billion songs. You know, on the Christmas iTunes Store day, also set a new record set a on new December 25th by selling over 20 million songs, songs in, one in day. one day. On April 3rd, 2008, iTunes surpassed Walmart and became the number one music retailer in the world. On October 23rd, 2001, the most popular Apple product was released, the iPod. Go! Steve Jobs told his engineers to build the iPod line. One year later, it was finished and released. The trademark iPod was originally listed as a trademark for internet kiosks. However, the iPod kiosk had been discontinued by 2001. The trademark was then registered to Apple Computer Inc. in 2005. iPods with colored displays use anti-alias graphics and text with sliding animations. All iPods, except Shuffle and Touch, have five buttons and the later generations have the buttons integrated into the click wheel. The iPod Touch uses no buttons of any of these functions. Instead, it uses a multi-touch screen. On April 7, 2007, it was announced that Apple had sold its 100 millionth iPod, making it the biggest selling digital music player of all time. 
In April 2007, Apple reported second quarter revenue of US $5.2 billion, of which 32% was made from iPod sales. Apple has sold over 163 million iPods to date. On January 9th, 2007, Steve Jobs announced his company's new product, the iPhone. The iPhone was Steve's first mobile phone project. The iPhone was revolutionary with its full touchscreen, full HTML browser, and media player. The iPhone was the first full touchscreen smartphone and quickly became the number one selling mobile phone. Heady times for Apple Computer. The company quick to point out today that this is not merely another cell phone, but an important new product platform for Apple Computer, changing industries in much the same way that Macintosh did in 1984 and then iPod in 2001. Now it's iPhone's turn. This is an extremely important product for Apple's future. Something Within iPhone's first three days of release, it sold one million copies. To this date, 13 million iPhones have been sold. Just a few of the iPhone's features include weather, third-party applications, email, wireless music store, Wi-Fi, 2-megapixel camera, Bluetooth, multi-touch interface for multiple finger input, and more. Steve Jobs has made an enormous impact on technology in the past as well as today. With his company, Apple Inc., he's been able to produce several revolutionary products that are used every day by millions.